Good evening, travelers of the night. Welcome back to The Stranger, where the immersion of an audio drama meets the chaos and uncertainty that is Dungeons and Dragons. Today, we're joined by Asteria as Dr. Isadora Glass. I'm listening. Ari as Esperanza. Salutary feelings from the great, but not so unfortunately, Snow White North. It's very warm today. Matt as Inquisitor Nihilus Von Stonen. Are we in an asylum? Are we in the hospital? Things will be crazy either way. And Shane as Trevor. Mm. The yoked uh, country folk <laughs> who's not quite ready to crow. Today, we're also joined by Katie from the Dark Nexus podcast, a Pathfinder Strange Eons actual play audio drama made by Plug and Hum Productions. If you haven't checked them out by now, you should. So stick around after today's episode and we'll play a clip of their show. My request to all of our listeners is to go check them out. You can find all of their details at thestrangerpod.com slash dark nexus. Katie, for Jane's last episode, any last words? No. <laughs> Stoic till the end. <laughs> yeah. I'll do it on the night. Yes. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get in to today's session. St. Serafina's Asylum. You've been here a while. How long have you been here? I think a few months at least. And what have those few months been like? Disorienting, giving way to anger and frustration, and the concern that this is where I belong. If you wanted to go somewhere else, somewhere familiar to you, where would you? Well, I come from a place where you can see the stars all year round. It's far from here. People come to study the skies. We try to make them welcome. We try to ignore when they're rude and presumptuous and talk down to us like we don't know anything. I never thought to go back there after I left with one of those men to marry him, start a family. And I wouldn't give that up for anything, but since I don't think I can go back to them, not like this, that's where I'd go. I'd go home, where you can see the stars all year round. And my last question for you is, what is your name? Where I come from, you earned your name. So I was born, Jane. And I left before I earned that name. My second name. So I became Jane Book, which was my husband's name. But my real name I think it's Fury. A while back at the asylum, you found yourself in a room with another patient. 
thinking back on this moment, they look familiar. And he looks over to you from a, a chair across from you in the dining area. And his voice is a little harsh, a little grizzled. And he says, I have a dream. I'm in a cave. I don't know. It belonged to thieves or something, but... All right. Uh, this is going to sound crazy, Jane. But I guess a lot of things sound crazy here. I'm a wolf. Can you believe it? I dream those dreams sometimes, too. Yeah. Uh, anyway... I have a meeting with Dr. Faust in a moment. Um, can you hold on to this for me? And he passes over a small pocket calendar. It has a way to track the dates of the year for the next few years. It's empty. It's an extra. I take it. See you soon. He stands. He walks across the room to Dr. Faust's office. Closes the door behind him. And still, there is something that is familiar of this person. For some reason, the name Herschel comes to mind. But later... Not too far later, you had a similar meeting with Dr. Faust and a visiting attending doctor, not a permanent residing one at the time. These memories come to you a bit suddenly. You're not sure why they're what you think about. And as you sit in your meeting with Dr. Faust... He sits across from you, leans back in the chair with his hands on his clipboard. Uh, Jane. Jane, right? Hi. You've been taking the medicine they've been giving you? Hi. Great. My name is Dr. Faust. I'm assisting your doctor as a consultant, but we're working on a residency. Anyway, I have a new therapeutic approach. And uh, this is your first session. I hope I can be helpful to, to cure you of your ailments. And what are those exactly? Well, as with most people here, it's an ailment of the mind. But I tend to think it's just thinking on the wrong track. It's what I've told others. And I have a pretty decent cure rate with this new approach. I've had two patients here already leave successfully. I think I can do that for you, too. Do you even go where? Home. They're done. Anyway. Have you felt foggy recently? Disoriented? Anything like that? With all these drugs you give me, it'd be a miracle if I didn't. Well... We're going to try a new type of approach. Uh, some people call it hypnosis. Uh, I, those are just, I think, extreme opinions of the subject matter. But if you'll go along with me, I'd like for you to forget for a moment that you're Jane. Can you do that? Do I have a choice? 
Well, the sooner we get along with this approach, the sooner our appointment ends and you can head back to your room. You want me to forget who I am? It's just an approach. It, you know, just we're just thinking, pretending. You want me to forget the only thing I've got. What I'm trying to do here, Jane, is take you out of your skin for a moment to look at the world from above, from a new perspective. Isolate the parts of you that brought you here and cast them out and start fresh. You could leave a changed person and go home to your family in the town you're from and and that's it. How does someone just forget who they are? I don't know. It's it's just a therapeutic approach. So will you play along? I. Okay. So for a moment, you're not Jane. Let's... Let's call you Victoria. Just so we can refer to you without remembering the name. We can stay out of body here. And... I know Victoria. She's a wonderful woman, fiercely loyal, strong, and at peace. No ailments. Normal. Does that sound like you? Sounds like who I used to be. Please roll an intelligence check, DC 5. Eleven. This game doesn't seem to do anything. Sure, you could call yourself Victoria, but you're Jane. Yeah. He looks over almost expecting. So, how are you feeling? Does that resonate? I don't know how to play this game. I either tell you what you want to hear, or I tell you the truth. And I'm not sure... I can win either way. Yeah. It's all right. This is only the first session. We have many more to go. And he excuses you. Let's you out of the room. We'll get back to this later, but we're going to keep one rule. When we chat, you're going to be Victoria. You play along, our sessions will go quicker, and you'll be out of here in no time. I understand. Wonderful. Some days went by here, and you remember being in your room. It's dark. It's almost a full moon, but not quite. And the door to your room bursts open. You see Herschel. He's sweating. He's panicked. And you feel... He doesn't look like somebody who is violent, but he looks scared. What do you do in this moment? I get up and I approach him, my hands out in supplication, in non-threatening. He runs up to you and he grabs onto your shoulders, not your hands. He holds you tightly and something about this feels familiar. I'm Herschel. I'm Herschel. I'm Herschel. And you feel his voice going rough. You feel perspiration on his skin and this tacky, kind of prickly hair standing on end. I grab him back and shake him. Are you? Are you Herschel? Are you really? Yes, I'm a Herschel. He growls. He starts to grow these sideburns down his face. You see his grip starting to elongate along your body. But just before much more can happen, two nurses run in behind him. One of them holding a very long needle. And they stick it into his back and depress the plunger. 
You're Herschel. You're Herschel. I'm... Don't forget. I'm... You're Herschel. Don't forget. And he falls onto the ground. As one of the nurses looks up, gives you the apologies. Sorry, sorry, we don't know what happened. And they take him away. To wonder why this memory is coming to you now, because you think you'd remember such a jarring experience. But no matter. There's another memory. You remember opening your eyes as if you've been asleep for a moment. It's a beautifully decorated psychologist's office, one of the rooms in this asylum that seldom gets used. And you see a man sitting in an armchair across the room. Looks familiar. And on the other side, you see Dr. Faust. And Dr. Faust stands, walks towards the center of the room, and looks towards you. Victoria, you know our game. How are you feeling today? Fine. Good. And uh, he turns to the other side of the room. And you, Ephraim? Fine. Victoria, I think we're on a breakthrough. And I'd like to try one more time. He walks close to you and kneels down to get close to the floor where he's looking you in the face, holding a clipboard. He says, Victoria, I know you. You're a fiercely strong and loyal person, and you are at peace. Does that sound like you? Please roll a DC 14 intelligence check. Natural one. Does that sound like you? I? Good. Victoria, I'm graduating Ephraim. He's done a great job here today. And he's chosen to stick around and work at the asylum. I'm an attending doctor here now. Do you remember that happening? No. That's okay. Ephraim, you're graduating. Take these. And he hands a blue nurse's uniform. Go to your room. And please get in uniform. There's a lot of people who need your help. Fine. You can hear the growling in his voice. Something always feels on edge about it. And as for you, Victoria, I think... I think you could do the same. But I'd like to have one more appointment with you first. And he walks out of the room and closes the door behind him. And you see the small paper cup of pills that you're supposed to take. And you feel in your your outfit, the one that everybody at the asylum is given, that some of the fabric is braid on the inner lining, torn. Am I alone? You are. Ephraim's left the room, and as has Dr. Faust, you have the paper cup with the medicine, which carries a small yellow pill, and for some reason that torn inner fabric. I put the pill... In the scene. As you go to drop the pill, you hear a 
clack as if it's fallen onto several others. <laughs> but you notice there's also a piece of paper tucked in there. I draw it out, read it, if there's anything written on it. Yes, it's loosely familiar. And as you open it, it's a small pocket calendar. You see X's on days. It's been two years. I fold it up and I put it back. You put it back, and a final memory comes to mind. You're in your room, laying in bed, and Ephraim enters. He's holding a small paper cup with pills, and he walks towards your bed and puts it onto the table. Please roll a DC 18 intelligence check. Eleven. Victoria, I wanted to talk to you, he says as he places the cup. Your name's Ephraim? No, it... It's pronounced Ephraim. Who? Who is... Who is Herschel? There's a silence. His thunder strikes in the distance. And you see for a moment as his gaze turns to the window. And for an uncomfortable amount of time, he seems to be looking out. Who is Herschel? He looks back at you. Should I know him? I think it's you. Faust told me you're a liar. (laughs) I hate you for it. You don't even remember your own name, do you? (laughs) Stop it. Why are you laughing at me? Great big hairy brute. You don't even know who you are. (laughs) Stop laughing at me. As he takes the side table and smashes it across the room, all everything in it it shatters to the floor. (sighs) He turns walks towards the door. By now, Herschel. He looks back at you. And though you perceive, especially with your passive insight, this is <laughs> indie after all, <laughs> you perceive the anger, but underneath is a profound sadness. As he closes the door. And you open your eyes, sitting with Dr. Glass, Nihilus, Trevor, and Esper in a patient's room all of those new memories having flooded back. Jane gasps very loudly. Are you, are you, are you all right? (laughs) I think, uh, I think I killed my, I think I killed my friend. Your friends? When? Whom? out there in the garden I think 
I think he was my friend once. D- that that beast, that monster, what we faced it, tried to kill us. Nihilus. We're defending ourselves, will we not? Nihilus, it's not always that simple. You should know that by now. No, I think I lost him a long time ago, but... I think he was in there. Jane reaches into her gown to see if that pocket calendar is still in the seam. It is. And as you pull it out and look at the dates crossed off, it's just under three years you've been here. <laughs> oh. A little bit dizzy. <laughs> S- sit down, dear. Sit down. Breathe. Trevor, give her, give her a hand. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Um, uh, uh, okay, uh, that, that feller out there, y- you knew him? He, he, he was close to you? I don't know, I don't know. I, he, he, he had another name, and, and there's a doctor, Dr. Faust, and he wants us to, he's trying to get us to, to to forget ourselves to be something else it's these pills these drugs this and and it, and it's a game it's a game that i don't i don't know how to play and i lost i lost the game i'm losing the game i can't i i i've been here so long <laughs> you have no idea how long i've been here <laughs> that's all right jane i i i I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Don't be it's, sorry. It's all right. My name is Jane. My name, it's Jane. It's not Victoria, whatever they tell you, whatever anyone tells you here, it's not Victoria, it's Jane. I'm Jane. Jane. Please, take a moment, calm breath. Is this a game? This, they're, they're changing someone? Please, this is the opportunity. We, we can help. We have the possibility to do something. We have the upper hand in a desperate situation. It's going to be alright. They're 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 making us into those monsters. Do you understand? Do you understand that? They're making us into monsters. That's 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 why we can't leave. That's they're all they used to be patients here i used to know them they used to have other names and now 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 they're they're <laughs> do you understand am i making they, any sense at all they they were giving you pills that messed yes. with your memory yes yes but I, I i i i i don't take them and jane tears open that seam and any pills in there will spill out on the floor no oh, hell a hundred fall onto the floor a pile of small yellow pills, some some paled from being so old, and some yellow and fresh. Well done, Jane. When I remembered, I didn't take them. When I remembered, when I was me, when I could do it, I didn't take them. I, I, I saved them. I, I... Uh, Esper's going to reach out for a moment. There's still a bit of bewilderment on their face, but despite it, there's a bit of a smile beginning to kind of come up on it. He... You did good, Shane. You did really, really good. It has not Never, never, never take them. Never take them. No, no. It's okay. Dr. Glass uh, scoops a few off the floor with Mage Hand and examines them to see if she can recognize them at all or if this is a Dr. Faust original. Oh, no need for a check there. It is a Dr. Faust original. She figured. Very well done, Jane. This is... Feels to alter the mind, to make someone forget, and also commandeer them. This is a powerful play at work. It's not a simple instrument, even with a large amount of time. It's be incredibly difficult to do. Been, it's been three years, so it's plenty of time. Yeah. I'm so, I'm so sorry, Jane. You'd be surprised, Nihilus. The mind is very malleable. 
when subjected to constant unrelenting pressure it will shift in order to survive um all right uh we need to um uh trevor kind of gets up uh wiping his hands off on on his pants looking over to the door into the hall we need some a- actionable things we need to do something hmm. here can we use the pills to, to do something? Can we use them against them? Can we? Is there anything? Well, uh, how quickly do they take effect in your experience? Do you, do you remember? Do I remember? Roll an intelligence check with a DC of 12. Natural 20. Yeah, baby! Clever girl. <laughs> I know everything about everything. (laughs) You remember taking a pill as you sat in the corner of one of the rooms, tapping your foot to the sound of the grandfather clock that echoed through the hallways. And with every tap, you remembered every second of that experience when you were most lucid. And you know that it only takes... 90 taps before you start feeling the effects. Minute and a half, less. Right around then. Less than two minutes. Quickly. It's quick. Works quick. Um, a lot of these kinds of places, I think, the staff rooms, they have these giant bottle things, jugs, that the the staff, they, they, they all take their drinks from it. Yes. Faust probably doesn't. He probably has his own stuff somewhere. Maybe not. I don't know. But we could take out. Yeah. When when I went to go pick up the doctor, Faust he weren't alone. He had uh, he had folks with him. Uh, a couple of grunts uh, looked to be mercenaries, bodyguards. I know the type. If we could get them off get them out of the picture then it'll just be us and him right you're all suggesting we remove the, the medicine out of the system we give them the medicine ah. we give the staff the medicine so that they're stuck with the memory problems now and they won't be so effective Right, we're posing to disadvantage them completely. You would altering their minds in a quick pace. It, it's a great idea. It will set up for. Uh, it would need to be combined with a quick action to be taken afterwards for us to um, take action upon that given moment. Don't you just want to leave? I'd love to leave. No. Pumped to hearing all that after seeing all this. Can I? And he's gonna backing off from the door. Go over to Esper. Esper, it um, kind of kneels down to meet them. This weren't my first choice coming here. Um, here in the stories, I I was reluctant. I didn't feel great, but we're here now, in this place. And so you didn't have a choice in coming here, but I figure that with what Faust is doing, what's happening here, I want to see what you think. I want you to be able to make that choice, because you didn't before. Now, we have an opportunity... Maybe the one, maybe the only one we got at the head off the snake. Um, I have thoughts. We can talk about them later. Right now, my thoughts don't much matter. What do you want to do? Do you want to just 
wash our hands of this and, and, and just boogie on out of here? Or is between you and Faust, can you leave it like this? You you come from a, a line of work where you, you killed people, right? right? You did? Sometimes. You're, you're used to it. You're, you're not... It's not fresh for you. <sighs> of, of all the things that we've done, I, I never... I never felt before it happened the need to help kill anything or to kill anything or anybody. Coming back here, I know for sure... I want to watch him suffer. I, I I want to watch everything he's done to to, to me, to, to to other people. I I want to make him pay for that. But it it doesn't change that I know that there is an entire staff here. And and what if the word gets out? Those things they they do make me worry. I know that we have a chance. If... If this is the best chance that we have... It doesn't matter if I'm scared about the consequences. It's the chance that we have. There's a rumble of thunder in the distance. Esper. If I may. Revenge. It is a dark path. It will not... You don't know what he's done to me, Nihilus. It will not make the things that have happened to you have not happened at all. It will not disappear for what has already been done. I understand you. I feel for you. I hear your pain and your suffering, but I'm telling you, I understand the path of revenge. It, it, it will make things worse. Standing behind Nihilus, you see his shadow. Only you see this esper as it grows slightly behind him. It's almost standing guard for you. I will make no claim to understand what has gone on in your life, Nihilus. I don't even care if it won't make me feel better. And I know it's not going to erase 11 years of drugs, of being ignored, of being not heard, and and not helped. And I'm allowed to feel really really angry about it and I'm allowed to want that man to pay of course I apologize I misunderstood I thought you came to this island in order to help improve yourself to get rid of any illnesses in order to become a better person I must have mistaken. I must have misheard. I must have misunderstood your words. You did misunderstand. I never... I never came to this place. I never, ever wanted to go in front of that man again. I came here looking for a completely different doctor. So don't you ever come up to me... And you try to chastise me because things have gone completely differently for me. In the distance, as the thunder grows, you hear in a distant island, not too far, a church bell. As the shadow continues to grow above Nihilus, as you see its arms starting to raise, as if propositioning you, is this person a threat? You didn't mean to it. Life 
It will throw you upside down. It will make you feel awful. It will make you feel happy in the right circumstances. Everything will be different. Yet, right now, this moment, there's an opportunity that lies before you. A chance for revenge or a chance to walk away. And you will choose for the revenge to make it worse. Use whatever excuses you need. I want to help the other people in here. People like Jane who have been suffering. I'm not here. You're the cool. Oh. Revenge. It is a sin or thing. It will claim your soul. It will grip on it. And it will not let go. I am telling you this. Forget, priest. Forget my experience of a lifetime. Ignore everything. I'm trying to tell you from a friend's perspective. This will not help. <laughs> Dr. Glass laughs. Esper wasn't looking at Nihilus for a moment because her eyes were preoccupied slightly above him. But when Dr. Glass laughs, her head whips to Glass's direction. What are you laughing about? Nihilus is complaining about his lifetime of experience being ignored and disregarded. And, for that matter, his preaching against revenge after... He very happily threw Dredgewell to his own bees. While I've got your attention, I apologize that I didn't interrupt sooner, children, because I'm not sure you're even actually arguing. Yeah. You can wish to stop Faust for various reasons. Perhaps, as we've discussed in the past, because he needs to be stopped, whether or not it's for revenge? Would it help to focus on something like that? My thoughts exactly, Doctor. I figure, don't matter by land, sea, or air how you get to the destination. We're here, right? Faust is in our way. And not only... As he ruined lives in the past, we've seen that. He's still doing it. It's still happening. If we didn't pop in, Jane would still be doing the same thing that she's been doing for, for three years. That's that's a lot. So, no matter what brought us here, something's got to be done, right? You're all right. I agree with you. Action needs to be taken. This is an opportunity for us. But I, I, I disagree in a way. What is in someone's heart matters. I'm saying... Don't let your heart be corrupted. And it needn't be. There's a, a stillness that permeates the room... You can almost taste the static in the air. There's a storm brewing. And Jane, now more than ever, you feel it. You feel that static on the horizon. You feel it in your blood. And every minute that goes by right now, as your memories continue to return, you feel power. What's your name, priest? I am Nihilus von Stoner. I come from Keenstone. I think you're right about what's in your heart mattering. But we can't... We can't abide what this man's been doing one moment longer. There will never be another time for this there will never be anyone else who could do it you're right okay Oof. hold on a moment please Asper are you alright there is no, no way that I'm going to be alright when I'm in a place like this I spent 11 years in a place like this and I don't want to spend a second long. You be as angry as you need to be 
I'm sorry, Esper, that I brought you here. I... I thought I could handle Faust. I... (laughs) This was my hubris. I remember not long ago when you were suspicious about Dredge and when I didn't immediately want to go along with your plan. You accused me of using you. You put on my shoulders how many people have not listened to you and who don't regard you for all of your intelligence. I'm not a smart person. But I can understand when somebody is being a hypocrite. You brought me here for a reason, for your reasons. So if you want to tell me sometime about how I used you, I will be happy to listen. You need to understand that sorry is not going to just wipe away how it makes me feel to know that you used me too. And I... I don't... I'm not... I can't hear it right now. I I can't. I'm... So... Many things, and none of them are things that want to listen. But you need to know that it... It hurts. The background rumble continues to approach... The thunder and the rumbling in between strikes seems to grow closer and closer as over the intercom you hear a gentle voice arrive as it says, Ten minutes to curfew. That's ten minutes until curfew. Thank you. Jane, do they come check on us at curfew? Do we need to hide you? Do they? I'm assuming they do. They check every single room, yes. All right, I could make you invisible for an hour or so, but not the entire night. They won't come in randomly, will they? They'll do whatever they want. But in an hour, I'll be able to change again. And in morning, I'll be at full strength, but I don't know that we have that much time. Jane, they don't know that you're here. This place is clearly on lockdown. Eyes are on us. Let's try to think about this in an advantageous way. They don't know about you, as but the wonderful things that you can do. They don't know about Jane. Let's try to bring that towards our tactics. Faust suspects about Esther's powers. That's why he wants her here. Right. Th- this lockdown. Is there a way we can... If we combine a possibility of removing the lockdown as a whole and putting the chemicals into the staff... Together, they could make for a wonderful surprise for a grand entrance. Look, there are still people that need care. Think about what Vander is up to right now. If we try to dismember, distract, get the grunts, like you were saying, Trevor, away from Dr. Faust himself, if we direct the intention towards him, try to get him by the surprise, perhaps, perhaps we have a chance in order to get a hold of him. And most of the patients here, Jane, they're, they're mostly like you, aren't they? There's not actually anything wrong with them, I suspect. Well, wow. Or there wasn't when they arrived. It's hard to say. I don't know that there's anyone else here like me, other than the four of you. I know my former patient is in the prison, and he's like me. And I, Dr. Faust told me that he's he seeks out special individuals. The, the, the staff is all former patients who are like you and me and us in some way. But they're not anymore. You're right. But my point is there's a switchboard in his office. I don't know if we, if we can release the patients against some sleepy, forgetful orderlies. It would be chaos. Honestly, I think we do better trying to take them out a few at a time, put the pills in them, and get out as many people as we can. And if we can kill Dr. Faust, great. But we're outnumbered. The only thing we have right now 
is the element of surprise. And that doesn't last very long. Not to say that there's no security, but it ain't like there's... Well... Armed guards? I mean, there's a prison... There's more like Ephraim. There's a lot more like Ephraim. Well, perhaps one of us should also be trying to uh, sneak these drugs into the the communal water jug, the staff water jug, to make them easier to pick off. Like, actually make two of us invisible. We can't, uh, we have to be careful what we do to break the invisibility, but sneaking around and slipping some powdered pills in a jug, that's very doable. I'm small. <laughs> well, we noticed. And I can be, can be quick too when I need to. Yes. Um, could I also point for some housekeeping? I don't know if this is going to be worthwhile, but while everybody else had been talking, Esper's eyes traveled back to the shadow over Nihilus. As the tensions receded, so did the size of that shadow. It almost reacted to the adrenaline and pressure that was building inside of you during the conversation. As it began to recede, there was a slight delay before Esper slowly, seemingly at Nihilus, <laughs> nodded her head very clearly to kind of Nihilus slash nothing. Five minutes to lockdown. Please make your way to your rooms as soon as possible. Thank you. I could create an illusion that Esper is sitting in the bed, sleeping. Do you think, will they try to touch her, do you think, Jane? Esper will have to sneak out when they come in, right? That's a good time. Oh, well then that's perfect. Let me make you both invisible now, and then when they come check, it can be the illusion. And then, and then, and then you just say that, you know, I can't be disturbed. I've had a long day, and, and it's... Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Jane, perhaps, since you're so familiar with Faust's office... You can try to get in there and work the the, uh, the switchboard. Oh, I'm familiar with it. You'll have a little time being invisible, so if you can't get in there right away, don't rush it. You know, we'll try to figure out other diversions and such things. You seem a smart girl. I'll find a place to hide till I can change again. We don't have a lot of time to plan more things, but does that sound like a good step one to everyone? Right. I'll... Give, give me the pills. I can go. The staff rooms are really obvious. I, 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 can, I can get the pills in. Esper, I'm not asking. You don't have to listen to me. I'm not asking for any sort of forgiveness, and I'm not going to push my case. I just want to say right now, you're being very resilient and very brave. I admire you. And Esper has bardic inspiration. Jane will take a handful of the pills, too, just in case there's an opportunity to use them. Don't forget not being seen is not the same as not being hidden. Good luck. Cast guidance. And I do take one pill. You don't take one pill, you take one pill. <laughs> no, I pocket one. <laughs> <laughs> Just to see. Yeah. Oh, she will later, but that nah, was probably not. Done. Might as well try it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> We're not all averse to experimentation here. Dr. Glass, just <laughs> thinking back to the cult compound. Um, do we enact the plan? Trevor, uh, hearing the plan starting to go around his head, he goes, okay, great, great. We got a plan. We got a plan. Wait, hold. So, do I, do I just stay here? I think you should try to take out the person who comes to check on Esper and give him a pill, but that's just what I do. Oh, oh, all right. That's, that's, that's a wonderful idea, Jay. And then we try to make it, meet it fast surface. And get their keys. Keys, right, yes. All right, Dr. Glass touches them each on the shoulder, and they uh, cease to be visible. Third level uh, invisibility. And suddenly, they're gone. But you know they're there as Jane and Esper, what are you doing? Going to move to the wall that shares the door. I'm going to press myself to the side of it just to wait and be able to slip out. It's a very good thing that Esper can't be seen because she probably looks really goofy with her hands up trying to be as flat as possible. 
I'm assuming Jane went to the same part of the wall first and then realized you were there and was like, oh, sorry, and went to the other to the other side of the door. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> right. So that the Little minute that the door is... Just... Uh, well, I'm sorry, went to the other side of Esper so that we're lined up uh, in a way that we can file out when the door opens. Okay. Not, not that the door opens on us, but that <laughs> we can go out the exit when it's open. It's curfew. Please stand away from your doors awaiting inspection. As not too long later, an orderly opens the door. It's a slightly heavy set man, bald, walks in and carries a clipboard as he walks through the door, leaving it open and across the room to the edge of where the bed is, looking towards Nihilus, Trevor, and the apparition of Esper in the bed. So, you know you're supposed to be awake for inspections, right? Um, I'm going to have to wake her up. You really shouldn't do that. It's been such a long, dreadful day, and Esper really needs her rest. And the doctor said so himself. Yes, I... Uh, perhaps you're not aware of the drug regimen uh, Dr. Faust has put her on. Uh, Horatio is particularly good at the narcotic effects, as I'm sure you're aware. Nihilus, please roll a persuasion check. It's going to be a DC of 12. Well, uh, the orderly's back is turned. Can I minor illusion a big snore? From uh, coming from the fake Esper, just to like uh, like a drugged up snore. All right, we're trying to sell it. It's somatic and material, not verbal. I'll give Nihilus advantage with a DC of twelve as a sickly drug-induced snore comes from the bed. Oh, total love because of advantage. First it was eleven, and now it's eighteen, baby. Oh boy. All right. Fine. It's fine. It's almost like we should work together instead of arguing all the time. (laughs) Crosses on the clipboard. Uh, Yep, all good. And he turns to leave. And at this point, Esper and Jane, you will have slipped out. Now, let's start with Esper. Esper, uh, you're going to different places, right? Esper is going to prison the waterhole. Yes. Jane, to Dr. Faust's office, right? Yup. Esper, you have a good idea of where this is. Asylums are usually laid out in a very similar structure. It's all about containing the patients, and you know how that containment works. Leaving the room and turning to the right, you head down the hall, silently, stepping past all of the rooms, all of which are closed except those that are being inspected. And with invisibility, please roll your advantaged stealth check. That will be a 21. Silently, you take your steps down the hall, making it all the way to the quarters of the orderlies. Although, walking up to it, you see there's another room next door. This asylum is a little bit newer and nicer than those that you've seen in the past. And you see an environmental control room the island and the saturation, the salt permeates the air, and these buildings need to be contained and breathable. Which do you go into? I'm going to really try and make this work in Esper. We're familiar with how the salt is filtered which means that salt is being caught up somewhere, but other air, the fresher air, is being put in. But everyone would have to breathe that air. And Esper doesn't want to poison everybody. She goes to the watering hole. Okay. Silently opening the door to the orderly's office, it's empty. Everybody is out doing their inspections of rooms. And you find a large basin, a jug, of water that's been accumulated. It's protected. Water is hard to come by. So you know that this is where the crew will certainly be drinking from. And 
from Esther's experience, the crew definitely likes to hang around and shoot the shit after the patients have gone to bed. So, I'll look this way. I'll look that way. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Get up. Use a stool if they have to. Stand up on the table with a pot. Two hands. Lift the lid, if there is one. Into the pockets. Handful. Divvies out about maybe a fifth to keep the pills, but the rest... Fist into it. Stirs it around. <laughs> lid. Back on. Shakes off the water. Books it out. There's no elegance to Esper's poisoning of the waterhole. There's some splashing around, and the pills are in, and you watch them dissolve, uh, throwing the lid back on. And I think with that in mind, can you just roll me a DC of 8 survival check? The low DC. That's a D6, correct? Well, first of all, how much was your roll before, Bardic? Two. Oh, so... You need to get... Yes, it's a D6. A six. Don't do the math. You got this. Roll the bones, baby. We got this. It's two. <laughs> well, now you don't have to forgive Dr. Glass. That's the good news. It's not It's not a casting of a magical spell to stir pills. I'm still invisible. The shot is like an interior... And just the lid gets taken off, and then you just see this hand shape, just indentation <laughs> in the water, just sort of <laughs> squiggling around. You shake your hand around in the water, and the pills, they dissolve. And in this adrenaline, in this needing to get out of there quickly, you lift your hand out, and the water, it sprays across the room. There are clipboards along, and journals, and notepads that now have this splattered streak that go across them. Shit. Clipboard. She's just gonna stop spinning. But only a little because Esper doesn't think they have much time. They need to wait for the person to come in here so that they can take the door gap and slip back out. You shake out the clipboard, putting it down, you move to the edge of the room near the door, and some time goes by, and an orderly walks in with another. And just in that moment, slip out around the corner as we move to Jane. Jane. Yeah. Moving through the halls silently. The rumbles of thunder grow in the distance. The static, you feel it in your blood, in your bones. And that feeling that you had when you were in the straitjacket and ripped your way out it's a hundredfold the power that you had in that moment in your head you hear Dr. Faust what's your name? what's your name? remind me your name again and you're a very loyal and trustworthy companion what's your name? Please roll a stealth check with an advantage. Now, we're introducing a temporary new mechanic here. Jane, for the moment, everything will be a legendary action. Oh, and by the way, you immediately gain the benefits of a long rest as well. Mm. Oh. As you go through these halls, what's your stealth check? I'm going to use the guidance from Nihilus. For a 26 stealth check. Damn. Not too shabby. I, I, you have to forgive me, though, because I, I have never played D&D 5th Edition at a level with it, with legendary actions, so I need a little education on what that means. I, I will gladly educate, because nobody here or listening will know what this is. It is completely made up by me, uh, but basically, you are so significantly more powerful in this moment the what what you want to do will be resolved not like i enter a combat and we go into initiative order each resolution is critical it's immediate and it's one check between you and whatever it is you're trying to accomplish okay 
So think of it more as a narrative steroid. <laughs> you are feeling yeah. the yeah. stars in the sky. They sing your name, Jane, from the heavens as the storm approaches. Uh, the storm that is me approaches Faust's office fast as I can get there. It's quietly. The door opens ahead of you. You don't immediately know how, but it was you. As you walk through the door, the pages in the room of the notebooks and notepads all silently fluttering with energy. The room is empty. There is a switch pad, and on the desk, there is an open folder titled Emuval Broder. It's a patient file. Yeah, I go to that folder to read it. As you enter around the room, walking to the folder, it rises from the table into your hand. And looking at it, you see Dr. Isadora Glass as a previous attending doctor. You see a patient history and transfers upon transfers. It's as if this person was moving from place to place at an alarming rate all throughout the continent of Sablemere until the last transfer is to under the supervision of Dr. Faust on the island of Crow Perch in St. Serafina's Asylum. And you see a red line crossing through his name as it says North Wing. You also see a pile of sticky notes that are attached to this. Appointments, many of which crossed off, but... Interestingly, an appointment for tonight in the North Wing for Dr. Faust. That is colloquially known, because if there is no North Wing, it is Coldwater Prison House on the island to the north. Last time, Dr. Glass spoke telepathically to me. Do I know if I can speak back normally no you wouldn't be able to and you've never even considered using an ability like that but <laughs> yeah. in this moment there is a tether to some other place you feel this line tugging you somewhere and the moment you even think Dr. Glass Dr. Glass you feel a grab a psychic grab it is uncomfortable and it comes from some other place as you're suddenly connected Emuval Broder that's your patient yes he's in the north wing in cold water there's an appointment for you there tonight with him Is Faust there now? I'm alone in Faust's office. Switch pads here. What would you have me do? Wes, is this orderly still in the room with us? He briskly made his way out to the next room. Though you hear the patrols of the orderlies throughout the hall, this place seems to be on a higher alert. But you're alone. With Nihilus and Trevor. Kind of alone. I'm here too. I tell Jane, you need to get to that prison. Do what you have to do to get me out of this building. All right. Jane turns her attention to the switch pad to understanding what her options are. A cable near the floor remains unplugged, which you're welcome to plug in. I'll give that as a free action. On the panel, however, uh, there is... The same lever that you pulled previously to open every door. There is a lever to throw a full building-wide lockdown. And there is simply, and I'm sure every D&D player from across the universe is going to appreciate this, a button that says emergency. Big red candy-looking button. But that's separate from the lockdown button? Yes, two levers, open, lockdown, and emergency. The button. It's very red. It's 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 a big red button. Almost hand sized. Oh, I wanna push it so so badly, but 
buttons. <laughs> you can't just put a big red button. On the phone. Um, Jane says to Dr. Glass telepathically, I'm going to open the doors and make a stand here for when they come. Do you know how to get there? No, not remotely. But, but I do have a gem that tells me where the sun is, even when it's not visible, so... You can only get there by the ferry. And it's dangerous, you can't go alone. Do what you have to do, and I'll figure it out. I'll open the doors and come find you. How about that? Yes, yes. Thank you, Jane. Thank you. If you can grab... If you can take the paperwork with you... Uh, I, I will get, I guess, quickly ransack this office for anything that might interest Dr. Glass or be of use. Break his stuff. The rumbling from the sky grows louder as you intend to rummage the papers in this room as the envelope folder on the desk rises and through the different cabinets and bookshelves, some of them opening on their own, some of the books falling onto the ground. Gosh. Papers start floating towards you in this room as if under your command as they start to lower in a stack in your hand. Oh, Dad. Wow. This amount of power is unfathomably large. Dr. Glass, are you there? Yes. Something's happened to me. It's happening. I don't know what it is, but I've got what you want and I'm coming to you. I don't know how anyone could... It's... I'll be there. The connection severs like a scissor cutting a piece of twine between the two of you. And as you leave the room into the hall, and at this point you pulled the lever, right? Releasing everything? Yeah. You hear the alarm bells come on as every door in the asylum mechanically bursts open at the same time. You hear running and yells through the halls as the orderlies spring to action. But it's chaos. And immediately, people start pouring out of the rooms. Patience. You hear some fighting. You hear running. You hear crying. You hear laughing in the distance. <laughs> Where are you going? I'm heading back to Esper's room, but yelling, Run! Run as fast and as far as you can! Get away from this place if you know what's good for you! Your yells bellow down the halls so loud that windows smash on two sides of the building. Everybody has heard this. Everybody. Including you, Esper, as you run back to the room. Dr. Glass, Trevor, and Nihilus. <laughs> That's okay. I would, I would like to do a telekinetic pull of the orderly towards me, but really towards Trevor. So it's a DC 15 strength saving throw. And it pulls, uh, is it 10 feet? It's only 5 feet. As one of the orderlies is running through the hall, getting right in front of the door at the right moment, you pull as they stumble through the door, tumbling on the floor beneath beneath you at your feet. So clumsy. He stands and he pulls a knife. Trevor, is, he's looking over like that was you, I'm assuming. Little old me. And he's going to dive on top of the orderly and just try and pin him down. Please roll an athletics check. It's contested. And I have here an eight. Oh, I have a plus nine to my athletics. Uh, Don't get a natural one, I guess. Luckily, I'm a rogue, so I'm an expert in muscles. Um, I, that's a 25 for athletics. <laughs> You grab onto his arm, squeezing it so hard the knife falls to the floor. You hear a cracking of the bone just slightly, and you grab onto the other, and you throw him to the ground, pinning him beneath you. Ooh. All right. Ooh, does the orderly have restraints on him? He does. Mate hand. To grab those. You're... <laughs> <laughs> Your mage hand flies over, grabs onto the restraints which hang in his back pocket, pull them out, and you have them. They're manacles. 
I probably, I probably hand them to Nihilus, actually. I don't think I can put on manacles with one mage hand. Dear sir, it's best not to resist. Go to hell! We gotta have one here. Hold on. Nihilus is weak as hell, so as soon as, like, the arm is not pulling in far enough, it's like a little bit of a lightning alert. <laughs> <laughs> Cattle pride. Don't be rude, young man. Oh, and and I just, I search him for keys, too, just before you move on. If he's got keys or anything. Yes, and you do find a set of keys to the asylum. Jane, as you run through the halls, you see the orderlies and the patients and complete chaos. Patients running, laughing, screaming, crying. And one of the orderlies grabs onto one of them, picks them up in this, this wrestling maneuver and throws them onto the ground before you. Oh, no. Jane casts light uh, guiding bolt at him, Ooh. knowing it's going to break her invisibility. What's the DC on that? That's a 19 to hit. So that's a 29 to hit. <laughs> As you strike him with the guiding bolt, its power is magnified to an uncomfortable degree. What happens? 18 points of radiant damage barrel into him or more depending on what this legendary business is she strides forward to the to the patient and helps them up says go Ron get out of here go fast as you can far as you can go fast as you can get there I'm going and she runs as the lightning that comes from the sky arcs through the windows barrels through the floor you can see as it traverses the entire building as it grips the sky and shudders them into unconsciousness as they fall to the ground and you continue towards the room. She keeps striding right past. The door to the room shake in the frame until it flies open, slamming into the wall on its own as you see Jane emerge in the doorway. All right, what now? They're all over. It's chaos out here. You see as the, the quantity of people now running by the room starts to become more consistent. As the orderlies are not winning this fight, the, the, the scuffle on the outside diminishes in noise as you hear less fighting and more running. As you begin to hear slamming against the front door as several patients have taken several of the chairs and are now trying to barrel the door open. Where is Faust? Can I sense him? If I hear his voice saying, are you Victoria? And oh, what's your name? If I hear him, can I sense where he is in this place? What about Vander and, and Abigail and, and, and the dog? I don't know who they are. Vander's probably good. I, I mean, he's sane. So, like, I think uh, if he's smart enough, he'll make his way out. He says as he's now lifting up the orderly uh, under his arm and is just gently starting to set him down on the bed. I can find someone for you if you want, while you guys go. There's a water stalker and a, an injured teenage girl, and they have a dog named Bandit. I think at this point what you're going to hear instead is further down the hall. What the fuck did I poison the water for? We need, it's only been about 30 seconds, <laughs> Esper. Maybe they become thirsty while fighting. You don't see Esper arrive back, but you do hear the soft brumbling of nonsensical word babble as it comes into the room. Does the orderly have a, a, a like a nightstick, like a like a club? He does. Yes. Oh, Jane will take that. You absolutely do. You have it. I would like to know if there's like a, a vessel or a jar or something of like rubbing alcohol or something like that. Every, every room has a medicine cabinet. Most of them are locked. The lock would not stand a chance against you. And you find a small brown glass vial of of alcohol. Of the rubbing variety. Yeah, I'm pocketing that. Right. All right, I think we get outside. You run out of the room, into the hall. You see as the patients continue to slam those chairs against the door. And you, Dr. Glass, who have the key from the orderly, are able to get ahead of them and unlock the door as a stampede of patients runs out into the courtyard. You don't see orderlies among them. And at this point, the asylum, having devolved into chaos, is now 
more quiet. And there is, in various groups, patients who might know each other, others that don't. This is still an asylum. And there are, as well, people who are unwell. Some who laugh in the bushes. Some who dance in the rain. And in terms of people who want to talk or want direction, there's not much of that. It's just outdoor chaos of patients. Should I see to them? If you can. You, you mentioned you've been away for three years, right? Do you even know of a safe place, a safe haven? Right now, I think I could do anything. <laughs> uh, Nihilus pulls out a map from his backpack and he opens it and he will mark on the map. Look, here, uh, it, it's a bit of a long shot. It's, it's been close to a month since we've been there. There's a compound. We... Well, we got rid of his leader. We believed that he was the head of the snake. And I truly hope that they've done better ever since we left them. And it's it's away from the big population. All those people there, they want to do better. They believe in it. Perhaps with someone to lead them, someone who knows the difference between good and right, you can, you can flourish there. Or at least yeah, guide these people to a safer place. It will be a track, but it's, it's somewhere. I can do it. Did you manage to get patient files? Yes. I wouldn't be surprised if one of them is a doctor who got in Faust's way. I'll gather them. Oh, thank you. Jane will try to do that. She'll try to use, she feels this power coursing through her, connected to the storm, connected to the stars, connected to all these things. But uh, what she is at heart is a midwife and a healer. And what she wants to do is gather these people together, calm them, and begin moving somewhere safer. And she'll use her survival and her medicine skills and she's, she's got a really shit charisma, but that she, she knows what she's about. So she, that's what she's going to try to do. Okay. Dr. Glass would like to try again, to look up at the sky and try to connect to the void or whatever it is that she and Felix are connected to and feel these patients and their special abilities and see who she's connected to. It's interesting. You look towards the sky and you, what you see is an unnatural storm. The clouds are not gray. They're black. The lightning pierces through them with each strike of thunder. At this point, has started to diminish a bit. And to read a connection to these patients would be difficult. But why? Why, when you could close your eyes, look up towards the sky, and feel the psychic energies around you, are you struggling? And then you notice something. I think only you would be able to see this. It's not with your eyes. You feel five points of resonance, of consonance. The center at the moment, completely centered around Jane. It's as if right now, in this moment, she is in the middle. Whereas in the past, it was the citadel, it was... In your research, this grand thing of points around Crow Perch. Right now, it's her. Jade, wait. How did you know Abelard Cook? He came through my town, where I live with my family. And he kept trying to talk to me. And... He kept saying there's something about you. And he was right. Only I didn't know it then. I can't explain it. I. He told me when things started to happen to me that he could help me. Asked me to meet him here and I never saw him again. 
just don't understand why he would tell you to come here of all places. Maybe Emil will know. Emil is who told me about Avalard. You are very... All the f- forces of the void are pointing at you right now, Jane. I can feel it. The Nexus. Right now, I think you are the Nexus. That doesn't sound like something that someone survives. Hmm. If I had to put money on someone, it would be you. Do you need me to come with you? I would surely like you to come with us, but I think these people are the ones who need you. Yeah. I agree. But listen, do me a favor, will you? When you see Dr. Faust again, tell him my name is Jane Fury. And it always has been. You you feel a small hand tug at one of your hands, but you can't see Esper yet, so I'll make sure that he knows. He's not going to forget. He won't have much memory space left, but he's not going to forget. Damn straight. Jane. Jane Fury. This will not be the end. Nihilus picks up his holy tome spellbook, the Red Testimonium. Familiares in vere. And this portal opens up a crackling fiery flames on the edges and out comes a albino fiendish bat-like flying creature that flies into the skies and swoops down and you see this gnarly creature starts to, if you allow it rest upon your shoulder and Nihilus will say Ariculus Noctifero that's his name, but if you come up with a cute nickname, that's absolutely fine too Um, this is my familiar companion of mine it can help you guide the way it knows where you're going if something happens to us something happens to me it will die if something happens to you or the rest and you need assistance kill it and I will know besides that it's quite useful very clever Nihilus in the distance you hear the silencing of those church bells as they ring for the last time and at this point as we find our way towards the end of the session but not quite Jane it's a bit of chaos outside the building but not something you can't handle and right now you feel powerful there's an old crate next to that ruined building where the body of Herschel or what's left of it is on the floor and as you step onto it and some of the patients look to you the first one walking up being that same patient that you diagnosed the pill for what would you like to say to them they did to us in there that's unconscionable what do you want I I she takes a step closer as some of the other patients in curiosity kind of start crowding around At this point 12 13 people she looks up towards you I just want to be safe and happy free will you come with me I'll try to make that happen for you she looks back some of the patients seem to know her others don't and you see a gentle nodding amongst the crowd looking up towards you on this crate 
I'll be with you. And I think a lot of us will join. All right, then. No time to waste. Let's be about it. Before you hit the trail, a lot of people I met in this island have been uh, simple folk, hard to hard to really get a, a, a beat on. Either they're too simple or, or they got thoughts within thoughts that I, that I can't even touch. Even looking at now, there's things I ain't never seen before. Whatever this thing is, is sick looking horse. Whatever, whatever is going on in this place that's making it sick, there, there are things, there are good things about it too. Whatever's going on with you. He looks up to the sky with Dr. Glass and, and night jars, whatever. It's good to know that there are people who just know what they want. And I can't promise that I'm ever going to meet you again. So I'll, I'll just say it now. With whatever power this gives you, I hope that you can... You can go see the people you love again. Because if that's true, then... I don't know, maybe there's hope for me. Um, so just... You'll know what to do. Trevor, there's always hope. If you don't believe that, then you ain't got nothing else. She lays a hand on your shoulder. It's weird. You ain't the only one who told me that before. Maybe it's time to start listening. Maybe it is. I know, wipe his nose slightly and uh, without making too much eye contact, just kind of turns around and <clears throat> yeah, uh, happy trails. He's going to back up, deliberately trying not to <laughs> show how much he's feeling right now. Jane, the ferryman has no allegiance. As you make your way to the dock with many patients behind you, some staying behind, some perhaps beyond saving, and hopefully if this place reopens, or when it does, there will be a place for them. But many of the patients join you as you board the ferry, the ferryman giving reassurances to his return so everybody else can go to Coldwater Prison House. And we see as... Looking back upon the party, Jane stands at the ship and disappears into the salty mist of the saturation towards the island. And that's where we'll end today's session. The Stranger is brought to you by Roll for Impact. Hold a candle for us because your support lights our way. Subscribe to our Patreon for behind-the-scenes content, early access to episodes, and exclusive campaigns and campaign prequels, including for The Stranger. Now stick around for a clip from the Dark Nexus podcast. Night falls were sealed in his bedchamber, and the hours pass. The hours pass painstakingly slow as it gets darker and darker and darker. And we're standing in the light from Ray's Morning Star. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, you see Roni drink one last extract. What happens? He's not worried about that uh, light going out this time. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Nine o'clock passes. Ten o'clock passes. Eleven o'clock passes. By this point, he does fall asleep. And you watch over the course of the 11 o'clock hour as this poor young man, the victim of a night hag, switches from a calm state of REM sleep into sporadic twitching and jerking and moaning that starts very lightly at first. 
you're all you're all looking at each other and maybe checking in with Dora, waiting for like, will there be a clear sign? And indeed, as you get about an hour into his sleep, as we're as we're cresting up close to midnight now, on the thirteenth day of <laughs> this campaign. Oh my god. <laughs> He goes from occasional sporadic twitches and moans to his whole body flexing, and you see his body just like vibrating in the air, and it looks just like something is sucking his blood out through his chest. His chest is elevated off of the ground. There's nothing there. You see absolutely nothing. All the buff spells we've started to prepare start come into shape here. Potions are down. Bless is cast. Protection from evils cast. Dora shrinks down to halfling size. <laughs> Grip's skin hardens. Roni's skin hardens. And Ray is going through the long and complicated process of summoning a snake from heaven <laughs> as Roni bends down and lights this candle. And there is a as this candle goes off and spreads this incredibly warm, comforting yellow light through the room, and you see a visible like, ring of smoke supernaturally extend out from the candle, filling into all of the corners of this room, and then in the center of the space between all of you, floating in midair, you start to... You see through the boundaries between planes. And first of all, there's just this like incredibly tall, lean, clawed humanoid shape floating in front of you in black and white. Details start to materialize. You start you see these these incredibly long, gangly arms with very like rigid muscles, but almost like almost no fat, very little skin. It's just like skeleton and muscle. Rakish, raking long claws, huge mop of foul hair. And this thing goes from indistinct black and white into distinct black and white. And then shoot, suddenly this hag is on the material plane with you. And she has been howling in rage. So you're here, you hear literally nothing. Screaming and howling like doom. Oh. And <sighs> when she left so many centuries ago, the damage was catastrophic. The energies destroyed so many of us. So many of us that marched at her side, at the side of the Tatterman. Those of us who were left, little better than shades, torn between worlds, neither here nor there, nowhere, <laughs> nowhere. Few clung to life, but I did. I believed. And then days ago, 12 days ago, it happened. Conjunction. Time and space and energy and reality and the dreaming became one. And she was here. She is here. Or she, she will be here. Or she always was here. I don't know. I don't know, but I found her. I feel her. I can't see her, but I feel her. The veil is so thin. Ariadne is nigh. But this one, this one is mine. Roll initiative. <laughs> Dark Nexus. Join us each week for a new chapter in an epic weird horror mystery. For more information, visit darknexuspodcast.com.